Good evening, everybody, and how are we all doing today? This is another Sunday night super live show from the Bench Grower Podcast. My name is Richard, in case you don't know. I'm sure by now you all know my name. How are you all doing? And I've got one question I'm going to ask you. What has happened to summer? Where has our summer weather gone? All we seem to get is rain, rain, and more rain. Oh, and a bit of wind, a lot of wind. It's been very, very blowy. Anyway, we can't really complain about the weather when you think of what's going on in the Mediterranean and Southern Europe. We are very, very lucky. Now, coming up today, we are talking about uh, squash recipes, butternut squash, courgettes, low sort of things. Something that I know quite a few of us are always struggling to sort of try and find the best recipes with. So, Let's see if anybody is out there, first of all. we got Adrian is out there saying, hello, Richard. Hello to you. My um, mouse is sticking a little. Turbo Stream is out there saying, good evening, Veg Podcasters, from another wet Sunday. Indeed, it is a bit like that. Philly SBB is out there. Hello, everyone. Hello to you. Uh, Jenny is out there. Hello, everyone. How are you all? Oh, another wet day here, but very lush. And squash taking over. That's something we're going to be talking about in just a moment. Uh, Anna Jones is saying good evening, Garners. Good evening to you. Alison O'Brien is saying evening all. Sorry I've not been on here much. I've been feeling a little bit down lately. Sorry to hear that, Alison. Hope you are okay now. Um, if you ever do need to chat, we obviously here on a Sunday, but feel free to email me anytime as well. I'm only too happy to see what I can do. Um, don't feel you have to suffer in silence. We're all here to help and do our best. Hargrave Gas is out there. Evening all. I'm still in Spain. I hope you've not been too wet. What's the weather like in Spain? Is it still very hot out there? Uh, who else have we got? Um, Digwell. Hi all. Had a super day at the Three Counties Food and Drink Festival. Started train just as we were leaving. You back home now? Did you win anything? Top question, top question. Idaho Garden Girl is saying hello, hello, hello. That reminds me, on the 12th of August on Idaho Garden Girl's uh, YouTube channel at, is it 7 p.m. if I remember correctly, she is interviewing the one, the only, Digwell Greenfingers. So uh, if you're free on that Saturday, go and check that out. Uh, by the way, if you're watching on Facebook, it's saying there's a bit of a problem connecting to Facebook. Hopefully, it is working okay. I, I just can't see anything. Um, I'll keep an eye on my... Oh, no, it's saying I haven't gone live on there, but we have here. Uh, Rebecca is there saying good evening, gang. Good evening to you. Um, what else have we got? Uh, anybody else? Anne Costales, hello from Ghana, Canada, calling off here too. Uh, yep, yeah, um, I, I, what has happened to summer is all I can say. What has happened to summer? Uh, anybody else? David Williams has joined. Good evening to you. Chili Kate is there. Hi, everyone. Sad to see we've been hit by blight. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's something not very pleasant, is it? Tomatoes and potatoes just get wiped out with blight. Hopefully it's not too serious and you will get all get over it. But uh, not a good start, not a good thing. Uh, Scott is there saying good evening, all face. Good evening to you. Um, who else have we got? Anybody else? Have I missed? If I've missed anybody, I apologise. I can't see anybody out there. Um, Ah, Digwell, he says, not a show, just loads of retail stands and demos, etc. We watched Pookie, a MasterChef finalist. She was brilliant. Excellent, excellent. Glad to see you had a good day. Now, TurboStream is kicking off this subject. My courgettes was eaten by slugs. The butternut squashes are holding off, growing, so nothing to eat yet. Yeah, funny enough... That brings me up to something I've noticed. My courgettes are doing okay. We're getting way, way too many courgettes. I put, picked a cup courgette the other day in, in the morning when I was out there. My wife looked out the window and just shook her head as if to say, no, not a, another one. Um, 
so yeah lots of courgettes but back to that squash the plants themselves are very very slow on finding this year i think it just hasn't warmed up enough for them they're barely seedling sort of stage and they're just not really thriving as of yet i'm hoping they're just going to suddenly kick into life and uh Get there and get there. Let's fingers crossed. Uh, Rebecca, the rain finally stopped yesterday. So a good eight hours in the garden. It was wonderful to be outside in the garden. It was a nice day out in the garden yesterday. A bit windy, but sunny and um, good to get a bit of gardening done. Turbo stream. Summer took a summer break someplace over the distant horizon far away. Yeah, it has gone away, hasn't it? It, it, it? I woke up the other day and I said it feels like November. Uh, Joe Fleming says, no one is going to be as wet like myself thinking about the shipyard gardener. Sh um, what's going on there? What's going on there? Um, what's happened to the shipyard gardener? Is everything okay? Uh, Zephyr courgettes are delicious, says Jenny. And Muddy Boots has joined. Evening all, rain stopped play again here. There we go. So that, that's everyone in there. So what we want to find out today, I'm just going to try... And see if I can get this uh, thing to go, to work. Um, see if it will kick in on Facebook. Uh, yeah, so what we're talking about today is I want to find out your recipes for courgettes and squash and those sort of things. I know a lot of my... No, no, no. A lot, a lot of, get my words out. A lot of people were particularly after butternut squash recipes, and I particularly am after courgette recipes because we have a lot of courgettes that I want to eat through. And one of the things that we've made this week that we've we actually had some of it tonight was a ratatouille using courgettes. Ratatouille, I'm sure I don't need to explain it, but I'm going to for those that don't know. It's basically a vegetable stew. So you take a load of different vegetables. Uh, basically a load of tomatoes to make the sauce, ideally chopped tomatoes, herbs. You Traditionally, it does use a bit of wine, but I don't like wine in my food. So we've just gone with without it. We use a bit of red wine vinegar, a few herbs. Basically, it's one of those dishes that you can just make up as you go. And it goes great with a wide range of things. You can use it as like a, a pasta sauce. It's a good base for many, many dishes. Pasta, uh, or baked potato, huge different things. Ratatouille. I mean, there's a film about it, isn't there? Disney film. I'm even drinking squash tonight to keep the theme. Uh, a film about ratatouille as well. It is such a great thing to do and use up the courgettes. But of course, I want to find out your ideas as well. Oh, that's good. Now, uh, I was sent a couple of videos from Digwell um, that are on his channel. Unfortunately, they were both sort of over half an hour long, so I didn't feel um, we could really use that in tonight's show because that would take up most of the show. So uh, I, I avoided using those. And apologies to Digwell, but thank you very much for sending them over. Just... Um, Two at half an hour would take up all the show. So that's the only reason. Let's have a look. Digwell says, maybe a bit late for you, talking about Chili Kate and the Blight. But spraying with JBA Blight Guard, it's a 100% natural product with no chemicals and is safe to use in your garden. I've yet to try that. One year, I will actually try it and see how we get on with it. Uh, David Williams says, uh, Jenny Hullett, perfect weather for blight. We've been lucky so far, but only a matter of time, I'm guessing. Yeah, I get it every year. And last couple of years, we've been lucky. But no, sorry, last year, we got it really early. This year, uh, I'm amazed we haven't got it yet, but we're keeping a close eye. Uh, Turbo Stream says there was one solitary courgette on the sharing bench behind my allotment behind my allotment shed. So I fried it with some bacon and eggs. Fried courgette. We had some fried courgette this week as well. Actually, my wife likes them literally blackened, where she turns them literally in a frying pan, crispy, fried, and there we go. Uh, Kate has joined, saying, hi, Veg Army. Apologies, I'm late. Lovely to see you. Uh, Jenny says, courgette, I roast stuff or add to sauce. Marrow I stuff with minced or curried peas. Marrow lasagna is delicious. Never thought of using it in lasagna. That's something to try. Uh, butternut squash, I roast or curry. Loads of soups or sauces. I'm making courgette. 
crisps. So let us know. Give it. Give us the idea of a few recipes that we could use in this. I know it's a bit tricky to try and type these out, but if you could, so we get a rough idea. Obviously, feel free to put the recipes in the Facebook group or anywhere else that we might be able to do later on. Uh, Margaret has joined. Dan and me are here. What about delicious courgette and ginger jam? That sounds interesting, doesn't it? Courgette and ginger jam. Uh, let us know how, what it is like or how you make it. Uh, Digra says, I sent you to trim the videos for the recipes you wanted to show. Oh, well, yes, I, you did. Um, I tried downloading them. And you have to be sign up or YouTube, what you would call it, to be able to download them now. So it was a bit tricky. Um, but I'm, I'm giving them an, a bit of a mention anyway, uh, because they were some very, very good videos. I've got to say, I watched them. And I wanted to, I wanted to make most of the recipes that you've suggested. Sorry, Dick, it was my fault. Um, but I'll know for next time. Scott says, good tip for courgettes is sorting them first before cooking to draw out some of the water. Intensis, intensifies the flavour and changes the Twixie. Twixie? I'm not sure what that is. Never thought about sorting them before eating them, but courgettes are generally just full of water quite often, don't they? So that that's a very good idea. I didn't think of that. Please. Um, a good idea. Rebecca says, I've not had the usual amount of courgettes this year. However, enjoying the food coming in. Now, when it comes to courgettes, it, I've always gone by the, the advice that two courgettes are enough plants for most families, which is something I kind of agree with, especially this year. I've, I've only got two courgettes here at home. I've got another four in the allotment, but they're late courgettes. But I was at one of the shows recently and somebody actually said there that actually um they said that was rubbish advice and grow as many courgettes as you want i think it does depend on the size of a family and how many courgettes you eat of course but i do feel two courgettes generally gives us plenty to to live and survive on uh, i as i said i came in the other day with another courgette and we've got about five on our worktop at the moment just waiting to be used Excuse me. And they're good sized courgettes this year. Very good courgettes. Toby Swim says, I like to bake butternut squash and around some peppers, onions and sausages with a thick gravy. Oh, that sounds very nice. But sausages and butternut squash, I know, go well together. I've got two butternut squashes left over from last year that I've got to try and eat, use up in saying. Sausages and butternut squash sounds like a great idea. Uh, David Williams says, I didn't put my potatoes in till June the 1st, so I'll be lucky if I get anything out this year. Eh, it depends which varieties, I would say. It's possible Christmas new potatoes. Anne says, I swap aubergine for courgettes in Muzaka. Funny enough, it's exactly what I was thinking when somebody mentioned that earlier. Yeah, um, I, I mean, I use all aubergines usually in Muzaka, but trying to try that out with courgettes that might be something we try this week and at some point looking forward to it looking forward to that now kate says i found a recipe for courgette and cheddar soup i'll try it soon please do share it that sounds nice courgette and cheddar soup absolutely delicious jenny says courgette chocolate cake is awesome now courgette cake is something that has often popped up. In fact, I was sent a text just before I went live from Nigel Muddy Boots, and it was his wife's courgette cake. Because uh, it's on text, it's difficult to share it with you, but I'll, I'll read it out. So you need 350 grams of plain flour, 350 grams of caster sugar, 120 grams of sultanas, 225 ml of baking powder, 5 ml of salt, 175 gram of shelled walnuts, roughly chopped, four eggs, lightly beaten, 150 ml of vegetable oil, 350 grams of courgettes grated, and 10 ml of grated lemon rind. So you grease two one and a half pound loaf tins, sift the flour, sugar, and baking powder and salt into a bowl and stir in the walnuts. Mix the eggs, oils, and courgettes and lemon rind. 
And then add three to two. Oh, add the the add the mixes together. Basically, add the egg, oil, courgette, and lemon mix to the flour, sugar, baking powder, salt, and stir until all moistened. And then spread the mixture evenly into the two tins. Bake in the oven for gas mark four for about one hour, 180 degrees C if you are on electric, that is. And then cook, cool the tins for 10 minutes and then turn out to cool completely. That sounds absolutely delicious. It's something um, I might have to get the wife to do this week as well. Uh, and says thinly sliced courgettes with breadcrumbs, fried with garlic and mixed with pasta and good olive oil. Make sure the courgettes and breadcrumbs grow nice and brown. I like that. I like that as well. Uh, I, I love this because I've got so many courgettes that I want to use. Looking forward to trying these out. I hear courgette wine is worth a go. Interesting courgette wine. Never thought of it, but we'll look into it. That might be something we can try one year. Uh, Digwell says, no worries. I have a 12 cucumber dish video coming out this week to add to the series. There we go. So if you haven't subscribed to Digwell Green Fingers allotment, uh, YouTube channel, sorry. Uh, he has got this 12 cucumber dish coming out later this week as well. Personally, I've um, I've been harvesting a lot of cool, uh, cucumbers this week as well, pickling cucumbers particularly, which I've I've made a big batch of pickled cucumbers that are in the uh, in the larder, waiting to reuse them. Go great on burgers and things like that. Oh. Um. What else have we got? And says, also, all chefs turn their nose up at anything more than three to four inches long for best flavour. Yeah, same as any vegetable, I think. They're best, or they taste best when they are small. Um, and baby particularly are very good. Um, Jenny says, I grow at least four, four courgette plants, two marrows, then all the squash and pumpkin. Yeah, it's just where, I mean, two courgette plants are plenty for us. But if you are vegetarian or you do eat a lot of courgettes, then you probably do want more. Digwell says, don't forget to always nibble a piece of raw courgette before cooking it. If the if the ones you grow are cross, from cross-pollinated seed, then it could have a high level of cucurbitine toxin. So if it tastes bitter, it could have this high level of cucurbitine. So always check that. It's a high risk. Um, and <laughs> Turbo Stream says, I found that out the hard way. Yeah, I know, I know. Scott says, I like making a salad with courgettes. Courgettes char-grilled or done in a hot frying pan and then left to go to room temp, then tossed with feta rocket and chilli and mint. Oh, that sounds nice, doesn't it? It does sound nice. Uh, Scott also says, chilled courgette soup is also good. How do you make a chilled courgette soup? Let us know. Chili Cake says, I love a butternut squash risotto. We made that last year. Delicious. Also great in curries, dolls, and soup. And for courgettes, I love baked with peppers and aubergines. Sadly, neither are ready. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, David says, going to have to move my three hub. Suffering like crazy. Be oh, sorry. Yep, yeah, no worries. Uh, Digwell says, my Venlo pickling cukes are only just flour. And they're the very ones that I'm talking about. They are, we've got so many of these Benlo pickling cucumbers off our vines. They're really good plant. They're, um, instead of being a cordon, I found ours to be multi-stemmed and almost like fan trained. And uh, we filled two jars up with pickling cucumbers already. And we've got so many more in the rate. And I think each week we're going to be filling a couple of jars of pickling cucumbers up. Delicious as well, aren't they, those Venlo's? Uh, really, really nice and decent size. Um, Jenny says, I want to have a play with an air fryer courgette ideas like the crisps. Also, courgette hash browns are amazing. I never thought about that. We, we should try them out in our um, air fryer at some point as well. Uh, Michael Hayworth is joined. Hello. Hello to you. Hope you are well. 
uh, barbecue courgette is lovely. Actually, yeah, what I did a few years ago, did this on the barbecue on the allotments. I took a couple of courgettes, I scooped out the inside, and in on the inside, I put like a creamy cheese sauce. I think it might have had a few jalapenos in with it as well. Uh, basically, stuffing the courgettes, put the two cor the courgettes halves back together so almost like the shape of a courgette wrapped bacon all the way around the courgette and then placed that in the uh on the barbecue barbecue oven for about half an hour and it was delicious absolutely delicious just full of flavor the smokiness of the barbecue helped as well so um very very nice Anne says, I've been converted to Rundin Ice. I like round courgettes. I like yellow courgettes as well. Again, this is a great thing when we grow our own food. We get different varieties and different colours and things that we can ex ex um, experiment with. So, all good. Uh, I love butternut squash, veggie stock, red lentils, and half a lemon to make my favourite soup, says Anne. Now, on that note, Anne has actually sent me a very very lovely video of this so uh, let's go check it out <laughs> go what a lovely recipe i never thought of adding salmon to that i'm going to give that a try this week as well uh using up those butternut squashes that we have um and if you want to put that i, I think you're in our facebook group if you want to put that video in a facebook group please do feel free to share that i love a lovely recipe idea butternut squash courgette um butternut squash curry particularly like the way the cat suddenly appeared when the uh salmon came out as well uh, my dog does that if a cheese comes out the fridge she's there bless her uh what else have we got chili field courgette barges are lovely but you do need to sort them first and then squeeze out as much water as possible how do you make these courgette barges it sounds absolutely delicious to say look they're good it sounds absolutely delicious to say the least Kate says, oh, dear God, I'm cooking a gumbo at the moment. Oh, lovely. Got distracted and used the spoon. I put the cayenne pepper to taste with. My eyes are streaming. Oh, 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 love gumbo. Love gumbo. That's all I can say on that. But uh, I feel for you. That gumbo is delicious, isn't it? I haven't had gumbo. Uh, I know I had it a couple of months ago, actually. Idaho says a sliced courgette sautéed with garlic and onions and chilies, and then with grilled with cheddar cheese on top. Sliced courgette sautéed with oh oh almost like cheese on toast, but cheese on courgettes. I like the idea of that grilled 
grilled cheese on courgettes sounds delicious uh michael says i love the music absolutely fantastic yeah absolutely real uh Anne says she will pop that in the facebook group when she gets a chance there we go so if you do want to see that again check it out kate says brilliant video indeed cool curries i mean i do love as no doubt you probably know by now curries and vegetable curries butternut squash just goes great in curries so many different things that we can do um as i said i've still got two butternut squashes left to try and use up and i'm trying to think of different ways that i can use them up in some form or another um and same with the courgettes it's all about trying to find different things that we can use i like the idea so much that all of you are coming out with so far with different courgettes recipes and i like more like more just to get the old juices i'm getting hungry now i've already had my dinner but you get me hungry kate says homemade sourdough on the go too fantastic absolutely fantastic um I do. It's what I love sometimes when we talk about grow your own is that not only do we like growing our own food, we like cooking our own food and experimenting and trying to do different things. Kate talking about homemade sourdough. Digra does obviously, as we all know, a lot of homemade cooking. Yeah, we make homemade Chinese dishes that everybody or a lot of people will say that. Um, uh, many Chinese dishes are not so, as easy to make at home or don't taste the same as a takeaway. I beg to differ. I can make a decent chow mein that tastes better than anything from a uh, Chinese takeaway. I can also make a decent um, shredded beef in chili sauce, much better than anything from a takeaway, I think. Anyway, uh, and everyone seems to agree with me. Getting away from the point there, though, aren't we? We're sticking with these squash and courgette recipes. As I said, I've been getting a lot of cucumbers, which are a summer squash. We'll, we'll class them as a summer squash for the point of tonight. And these are the Venlo pickling ones that we've uh, that Digwell is also growing. And what I the other morning I picked five of these. Um, five of these cucumbers i took them into the kitchen i sliced them there and then this was in the morning before i went to work sliced them there and then and i popped them into a bowl with a load of salt just to draw out some of that moisture covered them over and went to work that night when i got home from work i drained off all the water gave it a good wash and then i warmed up some vinegar with some spices um onions that's not what i meant chili um dried chilies peppers um trying to think what else cloves uh, trying to think what else i added to it mustard seeds all into my pickling spice warmed up the vinegar and then packed them all into jars did use the same for our beetroot as well packed them all into jars as i said into our larder they're meant to probably take a, a couple of weeks to really get all the flavor into them but i personally couldn't help but eat some the other night and they were delicious absolutely delicious uh chili kate says sourdough baker here too um and kate says growing vegetables has really made me fall back in love with cooking as well i want to do the garden in justice sadly my courgettes haven't done so well haven't done well so i'm trying again i think I think there's still time if your courgettes have failed. If you go to a garden centre, you might still find some courgette plants that you can plant up. And uh, they should hopefully still grow and produce courgettes. The difficulty with um, what I'm getting at the moment with my courgette plants is we're getting powdery mildew. I spoke about this on the podcast on Monday. Powdery mildew on the leaves, which just makes the leaves look messy stops them from photosynthesizing so i've been cutting off the leaves i know there is a recommendation to spray them with milk which i've not done but uh it's something that some gardeners have recommended and that's meant to help stop the powdery mildew however you know we're still getting courgettes out of it so it's not all excuse me to lose 
Turbo Stream says, I need to try sourdough. I need to try sourdough. Made a loaf this morning with the dried yeast. You know, I don't think I've ever made sourdough. I'll have to look into how we make it. Scott says, mashed courgettes, slow roasted in the oven with fresh herbs and lemon, then drain them and mash with a fork. Nice with diced chilies and a drizzle of yogurt. Great as part of a mezze or tapas plate. Mashed courgettes. That's something I've not thought of trying and I quite like the sound of. It's definitely one to go on a list. We do quite like mezze tapas plates as well, especially when we're entertaining because people can just help themselves. Still, um, I don't know if anybody else, slightly off topic, I'm talking about entertaining or having guests around. I've still got that bit of COVID syndrome where you forget what it's like to have guests around for dinner sort of thing. I still haven't quite got into the use of that. Uh, patty pans are doing well this year. Too many to use. I haven't grown any patty pans, so I take the word on it. But it is, it, yeah, it has been a good year for courgettes, I've found. So, yeah. Uh, Digwell says, powdery mildew only occurs on old leaves that are past their best. Just remove them. I used to spray with, with milk, etc. Don't bother now. Exactly. Exactly what I do. I just remove the leaves. Don't bother spraying with milk. Um, and that's that. I think poor ventilation doesn't help with powdery mildew, if I remember correctly, as well. But what can you do? I mean, it's just one of those things. I mean, it happens. It happens. As long as it doesn't get too bad and kill all the plant, it should be okay. Uh, you need to have a sourdough starter. I'm happy to do a video next time I'm making, if interested. Yeah, go on, please. I think that would interest our group. We are pretty much into this sort of thing, so that would be great. Jenny says, I'm going to try and freeze courgette this year. I saw a video where they grated, salted, look at this screen, but they grated, salted, washed, drained, and frozen in cup measures. Great for cakes, sauces, and soups. A little summer hit in winter. Yeah, um, I want to say I would be freezing a lot of our courgettes. Our freezer is completely packed at the moment. We've been harvesting so many vegetables. Our freezer is just completely packed. And we've got, dare I say it, and I cannot believe I'm saying this, we have hardly any meat in our freezer. We're pretty much eating vegetables only at the moment because we have so much of it. And I cannot believe I'm saying that. I'm a, what you would call a carnival, but <laughs> just the way it goes sometimes. I cannot cannot believe it we're just so i think i was saying that this year was going to be a good year and it's certainly proven itself uh turbo stream says of course simply frying courgettes in butter is lovely yeah yeah i gotta say you know there's a lot to be said about growing with things in butter um we we um I prefer to cook with butter than oil. I know it's not as healthy and probably more expensive, but the taste is better, in my opinion. Uh, anybody else? Anybody else? Um, Dear Grail says to Jenny, it's easy to freeze. And David Williams says, also saw that freezing video. It looks good. Uh, Stuart Jackson has joined. Sorry I'm late. Been busy this weekend with getting my daughter home from Barcelona after 11 months away. Yeah, oh, he did. I meant to say Stuart did text me to say he may not be here. Um, haven't seen, just thinking, I haven't seen Oracle for a while. Is, am I missing him or something? Uh, Turbo Stream says, I did try one year to make beetroot burgers with grated courgettes. They tasted nice, but broke apart. No idea what I'm hidden with, though. Beetroot burgers are very, very interesting. Beetroot burgers. I've, I've got to give it a try. I've got to give it a try. I'm going to give beetroot sandwiches a day try this year as well. Uh, I'm loving this tonight, says Jenny. I So many great ideas. Can we have a beetroot night one week? I would love more inspiration for beetroot other than the norm. Yeah, we can do. I'll put that on the list. Beetroot recipes. I'll put that down right now. Um, don't forget, guys, you're always welcome to share 
your ideas for shows in the future. You guys help shape this show. Uh, but it's good to have her home indeed. And Anne said, how about the flowers? Good point. We didn't really mention about the courgette flowers. Um, and I'm wondering if you can use the pumpkin and other uh, squash fam flowers as well. All pretty much the same thing. And specifically with things like if you're growing the giant pumpkins, you only really want one or two pumpkins per plant so if you're picking the flowers anyway uh what can we do with them anyway Anne says i stuff them with feta and basil and dip in beer batter then deep fry delicious oh that does sound good i wonder if we caught i wonder if we've got any idea any way that we could use it in the air fryer or something uh, Turbo Stream, not seen Oracle for weeks. Bally is missing too this week. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, th I think Joe Fleming, I saw him earlier. Uh, Jenny says, great beetroot timing for reading out Turbo Stream. Yeah. Uh, Scott says, courgette and feta muffins. I do them at work and they go down the tree. What's the recipe, Scott? What's the recipe? Uh, courgette fritters, spice, no, no, slice lengthways, dip in beer batter, deep fry, lush. Oh, that does sound very, very good. My wife did make some courgette flapjacks the other day. Uh, I said, try to use up all these courgettes. She made some courgette flapjacks, but I've got to admit, I wasn't keen on them. For me, they just needed a little bit of something sweet just to lift them up a little bit. They weren't quite what I was hoping. They just missing that 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 sort of I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It, it just didn't quite hit the mark, Courgette Flapjacks for me. There was something just missing, but good idea. Good idea nonetheless. Beetroot would be lovely. It's my favourite homegrown veg, so any new recipes would be wonderful. Well, there we go. As you know, we, we've got that down on the list, so we can definitely discuss that one week. And feel free, of course, as always, to share your... If we do do a beetroot, we, we will do a beetroot recipe. Feel free to share your own recipe ideas in videos or send to me in advance or something and we'll see what we can do. Uh, Scott says, I will post on the muffin recipe in the Facebook page later. Excellent. Hopefully, I don't know what's going on with the Facebook page. Um, I'm not sure if it's a page or the group, but something's not going out as it should. Scott says, I will, oh no, I've said, read that one, haven't I? <laughs> I've already read that one. Uh, so um, let's have a look. Oh, no, we've got a couple more recipes coming in now. Anne says courgette plate pie. Make a quantity of cheese pastry and line the dish. Layer thinly sliced courgettes, chopped spring onions, oregano, or is it oregano? How do you pronounce that? Grilled sage, derby cheese and season, cover with pastry glaze and bake. That sounds delicious. That sounds really, really nice. Uh, Nigel says, courgettes are a great additive to my worm bins when I forgot to harvest the two-foot monsters. They basically turn to marrows when they get too big, don't they? Um, but, I, I mean, again, I think when you pick them young and small, they taste better, but they also produce more because it just encourages the flowers, I think. Um, we're talking about wormeries on the podcast tomorrow, funny enough. Um, we could write a veggie cookbook with all this lot. We, we could, we could. Um, this is why Scott, as you know, Scott is our resident chef on the podcast and he wants to write a book. So we're encouraging him to do that in the future. Uh, Stuart, I couldn't get to the Facebook tonight, so I am here. Yeah, I can see there's a, a an alert saying it's not there for some reason. Oh, my God, these recipes sound so good, says Rebecca. Indeed, they do. They're making us hungry once again. But this is... And the great idea. I've got to go and get more courgettes in, um, in order to 
to make all these. And uh, Scott says, Anne, that sounds great. Also one of my favourite cheese. I'm giving that one a go. I'm giving that one a go too. Um, Jenny says, can we have a wormery night as well? I really want to be hit with all the info, hits and tips. Okay, I'll write worm bins down somewhere. Worm bin, worm bin. Write that down. My notebook gets fuller and fuller each week. Um, yeah, yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Stuart Jackson says, I've really enjoyed Scott's slot on the podcast, so please keep them coming. We've got a good one for you tomorrow. I haven't put the recipe up just yet. Busy time. End of month is always so busy uh, getting the seeds out, which are going in the post tomorrow. So hopefully this week, every member of our supporters club should receive their seeds in time for the weekend. Good selection coming out this week, but you'll hear more on that tonight when I do the podcast for everyone. Uh, Robert. Robert is saying that Facebook is okay for me. Are you in the group or on the page? I think that makes the difference. Um, Wormery would be great, something I want to give a go, um, and so on, and so on. Um, yeah, so uh, so uh, what was I going to say? Got to remind everybody, of course, don't forget that we are doing the Alternative Veg Grower village show we've got about another few weeks for you to get your entries in and details on that and the vegcrowdpodcast.co.uk i have got to make that a little bit easier for everybody to find granted but if you head to the vegcrowdpodcast.co.uk in the search bar just uh, enter or search for the alternative veg grower show and it should hopefully come up with the correct post we're trying to make it a little bit better um, not so easy to do. Um, also, don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, the usual jazz that we have to say as we go live. And there was something else I needed to remind everybody, um, and I can't remember what it is. It will come to me at a later date. Uh, Anne says, our allotments club used to produce a cookbook each year. We joked first two editions should have been called 101 Things to Do with Courgettes. I like this idea. I like this idea. This perhaps could be something we do with a VegGrowth podcast, a, a cookbook each year. Self-published. We're going to do that. 2024, we're going to start doing that. Now we're going to start doing it this year with all the recipes we've been compiling. Scott, hopefully you're okay with this. We'll do, yeah, we're going to make a note of that. Make a note of that cookbook. More work, more work for me to do, but that'll be in the winter months when it's just that little bit easier. Idaho says, I shared courgettes. Um, we, uh, for clarity, I just suddenly thought we're calling them courgettes. Idaho and others in other parts of the world might call them zucchini. Um, I know we are mostly in the UK, but there are others out there who might be wondering what the hell we're talking about when we say courgettes. Uh, I shred courgettes and then re dehydrate the shreds. This stores great and can be used in soups or rehydrated and put into muffins. I'm going to be doing that as well. Just like Jenny says, I'm um, I'm I, I'm pinching that one. Yeah, uh, I'm pinching that one as well. Uh, David Williams, the Supporters Club, join through website. Yeah, the vegpodcast.co.uk. There's a link at the top. Join the Supporters Club. Um, go and check that out and become a member. Um, each month you get a collection of seeds, extra behind the scenes podcasts. Um, five pound a month I charge just quickly for that. Scott says, 100% great idea. I was thinking the same thing about this cookbook. We'll, I think if Digwell is up for it as well, we, I think, well, everyone's, if everyone's up for it and it wants to submit a recipe, everybody submits one recipe and we'll try and do a self published book. That's a, that's might be the way do this i like this idea 
Uh, Idaho says it's dehydrated down into a very small amount, so a lot can be stored in a very small space. I've got to admit, we need to use our dehydrator more, so perhaps dehydrating courgettes is something we need to do. Um, just so on. Stuart says, am I the only one that had no luck with courgettes this year? Pumpkins and butternut squash going well, but courgettes are rubbish this year. Uh, I don't know. I think Turbo Stream said earlier he's having trouble with courgettes. I'm having good luck with courgettes, but my butternut squash, not so much at the moment. They seem very, very, very slow this year. All right. On that note, let's quickly go through the sew along video, which you guys wanted me to sew lamb's lettuce this year. Well, this hello week. everybody. Welcome to another one of our sew alongs. This week we are sewing lamb's lettuce, and this was voted on by our live stream that we do on a Sunday night. So we're going to sew some lamb's lettuce, and I invite you to sew some lamb's lettuce along with us as well. But if you already grow lamb's lettuce, let us know your tips and tricks in the comments below as well. Now, I have got to admit, I absolutely love growing lamb's lettuce. It's one of these plants that grows like a weed, and in many parts of the country it is found as a weed anyway. It is packed full of so many nutrients and vitamins. It is just really healthy for you. And we tend to use it a bit like a lettuce, as like a salad green. It's absolutely delicious well worth growing and best of all it grows fantastically throughout the winter they say it can tolerate down to minus 10 maybe maybe but it can certainly tolerate the cold temperatures that we may achieve here on the south coast of the uk so lamb's lettuce what we're going to be doing is we have got our green tray here that we tend to use or so in, and I filled that up with seed sowing compost with a bit of added perlite. And what we're going to do, we've got our seeds, we're going to pour the seeds one by one into each of the holes that I've already dipped, about a centimetre deep. They are fairly small seeds, so a centimetre would be about right. And then over the top, we're just going to shake in a bit more compost. Give this all a really good watering and we're going to leave these outside to germinate. reason I'm doing them outside is that they are a cool loving plant. In this greenhouse might just be a little bit too warm for them. Really we're looking for a temperature of about 18 degrees C. Now what we would do as these plants grow we will prick them out into bigger pots and eventually transplant them out into the garden in a bed where they are to grow. They will pretty much grow all winter and what all we'll do is treat them like cut and come again salads and pick them as we need them. As I said we tend to use these in the kitchen a bit like salad leaves so they're just a great addition to use in the kitchen for that throughout the winter. So as I said, let us know in the comments how you grow lamb's lettuce and what you do differently. It'd be great to find out. And don't forget, this is all about sharing your tips and tricks. Until next time, please take care. There we go. That was the lamb's lettuce sown. Excuse me. Lamb's lettuce sown for this week's Grow Along. And it's up to you guys to decide what we want to sow next week. I think... There was a lot of, um, last week, Mizuna was mentioned. So we could do Mizuna if that's something you want to do. Uh, Radicchio was another one that was mentioned. So over to, up to you guys what we want to do. Um, back to the comments. <laughs> I know, yes, yes, it took me a while to figure out you were talking about zucchini. Sorry, I did mean to say that right at the very beginning, but, uh, you know how it is. We English are not very good when people call something a different name. Um, we think it should be our way or the highway, don't we? Uh, Rebecca says, yep, yeah, mine are rubbish. Must be a Midlands thing. Talking to Stuart about the trouble with courgettes. Um, yeah, interesting. Interesting to find out how it affects people differently. Uh, Digwell, the air fryer is a lot quicker than the dehydrator and uses less power, believe it or not. I'm trying to think, my my air fryer is so noisy. I tend to do when I dehydrate. We tend to do it overnight. To be fair, um, 
which is pretty quiet. We 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 chopped liver for Roxy. We dehydrate that as a, a treat for training. So we tend to use that our dehydrator a lot for that. Um, the air fryer would be noisy to have on overnight. If we were to do that, we'd have to do it during the day. But I'll give that a try at some point. Uh, Scott says, I did something, a, a cookbook at work that got all the chefs to do a recipe and so sold it to raise money for charity. Yeah, I think we will get a, a recipe book later on in the year, probably October, start looking into that. Um, my courgettes grew but was eaten by the slugs. The squashes are very slow to get growing so far. Yeah, I mean, even the, what do you call it, the... Um, the one that's meant to be the big one, the shark's fin melon. It's growing, but it's not growing at the rate that people are expecting it to grow. It must just be the year, although we are getting fruits on it. So something is doing right. Idaho says I might have to buy one of those air fryers. A great piece of kit. Great piece of kit. Use our air fryer on a weekly basis, if not several times a week. Uh, it surprised me, said Digwell. Um, I really like the grow alongs, Richard. It it prods me to follow through. You're welcome. You're welcome. That was the idea behind it, just to try all these different things and uh, see how we go. What I'm going to try and do in the future, one of the biggest things I, 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 it's slightly off topic. One of my annoyances when it comes to grow alongs is that I haven't got any footage of the particular vegetable from the past. So I need to go and create some stock footage in order to keep doing those or try and get some growing a week in advance two weeks in advance so i've got something as uh, for the b-roll technical but just something i feel is just gonna make it a little bit more tidier uh digress says my air fryer has a dehydrate setting almost silent 40 hours at 60 degrees c for a batch of tomatoes um Nigel's is a ninja air fryer. So, Digwell, what is yours? Mine's, I can't remember mine is. It's a good one, though. We like it. Our cookbook could raise money for getting kids into gardening. Could do. Could do. I have to speak to Lee on that because that's Lee's sort of field. But it's definitely something we could look at doing. Definitely something we could look at doing. Um, the trouble is, there's not even self publishing, there's not a huge amount of money in it. Um, but we'll look into it. Our air fryer is also a dehydrator, brilliant investment. I got one with shelves and a rotisserie rather than a basket one. That's the same as ours. We got a rotisserie and shelves. Um, I'm trying to think what else it's got a bit, it's got a Basket for rotisserie as well as a spit. Um, love it. Absolutely love our air fryer. Uh, Digwells is also a ninja. Um, and that's Idaho. I will look at that as well. Indeed. A good pieces of kit, aren't they, air fryers? I love our rotisserie chicken when we do our air fryer. Um, but that's not we're not, not here to talk about chicken, are we? It's meant to be courgette, butternut squash, and so on. Um, so please do keep sharing your courgette or butternut squash recipes. Uh, at this moment, I think it's only right that we jump into, um, have a look at what's going on in the Facebook group. I'm having to do this a little bit different tonight because, uh, for some reason I've lost the file of what we were going to be. Um, let me see if I get this right. Lost lost a file of, hang on, that should be fully open. It's not doing it. Lost a file of uh, the your photo. So we'll have a look and see what is going on. Oh, that's me. Um, um, so what have we got? Scott, uh, he, this year I've grown more flowers in between my edibles, all mixed together, and try not to pick any empty spaces. There you go, a lovely bunch of flowers in a pot. There we go. It looks stunning, doesn't it? Some flowers, and I'm not sure the rest. I'm not going to try. Uh, not exactly the best person for flowers. Uh, Scott, again, I'm also I'm enjoying the yellow runner beans, a new one, and have mixed those with standard green ones. This goes back to what we were saying earlier. Yellow courgettes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So much better than anything or different colours. They are great. 
Uh, Kate also sharing lots of photos, having a wonderful weekend down on the allotments. You can see that's Kate with the beans. We've got tomatoes, we've got lettuce, we've got beans, carrots, a lot of photos going on in there. Um, what else have we got? And also a week in her garden, cucumbers, tomatoes, some sort of jelly or jam made there, broccoli and more beans as well. Uh, that was the pack choice so along. We won't get into that. Tanya's asking a great question. Uh, she's I often mention about somebody who works in the well, a lorry driver and gardens can only garden at the weekend. But she mentioned about going to a gardening show um, to see what we did, try and enter some of her stuff. Oh, zombie zombie worms. Kate's been sharing about these ancient worms that have been revived after 46,000 years. Was it 46,000 years? Something like that. Um, somebody was talking about the quails. Steve has shared a July plot pick. We'll probably go through those next week if everybody wants to share the end of July plot pick for next week. From tomorrow's the end of July, so we've got that. And then Jenny has also shared these picture of her Hasselback Purple Majesty potatoes um, and also uh, sunflowers going on well there uh, what else have we got Stuart Jackson um, cut the branches off uh, from his apple tree with the yellowing leaves not easy to see the picture I'll be honest so it's hard to work out what was going on there uh, Stuart um, so let's see. Um, let's see. Let's see what everyone is saying. I should be looking at this. Turbo Stream, what are these new fandangled air fryers you speak of? They're great. They are great. They are great. They cook really, really well. Various things. Um, just have a look. What have we got? Idaho. I was thinking about getting a second dehydrator, but maybe I will get the air fryer. Give it a try. Give it a try. Uh, David says, just applied for the membership, which I'm sure if we won't get it through, is a very vacate the pros. I'm guessing I'd expect an email if it was successful. I've not got anything here, so it may have not been successful. Um Usually come through pretty quickly. What else have we got? Anne says, what other squashes do you grow? My favourite is De La Quita. No need to peel. So sweet and delicious. Good question. Good question. What other squashes do you grow? Obviously, pumpkins, butternut squashes for me. I'm doing a variety. It's another summer squash, Sunburst. I haven't produced anything yet. Um... But there's lots there going on. Um, but Sunburst is the other one. And obviously, marrows and cucumbers are a, technically a squash, aren't they? Uh, Digworth says, in the last few years, I've gone from cooking in a full electric oven to using a combo microwave oven to using an air fryer. My electric bill has plummeted. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. Again, I... We've got gas oven, we've got a gas range oven, and we use our electric air fryer more than anything now. And it's great, great piece of kit. Luckily, gas is cheap uh, to, to do. Uh, so that's what Facebook is. Not, not on social media anymore, so I can't join in that selection. Um, yeah. Uh, we do have the forum on the website if that is any use, but it gets it's it, it gets so used with spam. I can't actually delete the forum or clear anything because it's overused. I've got a we've got working on a way to try and start that again. I was considering getting rid of a forum because it doesn't really get used. But I know Adrian Turbo Stream, you are a supporting member. You can actually go into the supporters club and there's a forum just for supporting members, which doesn't get used or and it and it doesn't get spammed in that one 
Uh, I'll try again. Now. I'll keep my eye out. I'm just sending out tomorrow's seed, so you'll be in time. Uh, I suppose to support. I sowed the supporters' club squash. I never remember the variety of anything I plant. So that could have been the Waltham butternut squash. Would be my guess. That were last month, or was it this month? Um, can't remember. Squash. Sometimes I try and fe feature squash quite regularly because they're a great one to grow. Uh, Jenny says over 20 varieties of squash and pumpkin. I'll post a list. That's a lot. But it's worth it, isn't it, at the end of the day? I think so anyway. Scott says, ah, oh, Hasselback reminds me of a nice thing to do with courgettes. Hasselback courgettes. Prep in the same way. Salt for 30 minutes and rinse off. Then rub with spices, things like paprika and roast. Is that Hasselback? I think we've discussed this before, um, and I've never really heard of it until you said you slice it, isn't it? And then you can stuff it with something. Am I right or wrong? Educate me on that. This year we've grown butternut celebration, mashed potato, and uchi, 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 uchi curry squashes. I've never pronounced it. I tried in the past growing the spaghetti squash, but I was never impressed with those, the uh, spaghetti squash. Tried those in the past, wasn't impressed. But some of the other ones, the mashed potatoes, and there was a boiled potato version of squash as well. But I was a bit, tried those in the past. I think I liked them, but I was a bit, wasn't sure it was quite worth the hassle or the space compared to our potato growing. Uh, Digwell says, dry sugaring after salting, they lose all softness. That's a good idea. Good idea. Um, again, these are all great ideas that we can experiment with. Pumpkin slash squash is a large part of my winter food supply. Not long used the last one from last year. I can't get enough. I'm with you on that. Our winter squashes are great. You know, they store, as I said, my butternut squashes are still going strong in storage. And I've really, I've really got to find a way to use those up just to use them up. Things need to be simple. So it's French beans, runner beans, butternut squash, etc. Simple brain, you see, or it's my age. I, I I agree with you. I do agree with you. Um, I'm pretty sure the squash that you're talking about were the butternut squash. Scott says, yes, slice, but not all the way through. There we go. And Kate's got to go. I will see you next week. You take care, Kate. Lovely to see you. Enjoy that gumbo. Um, I, I'm quite, quite, quite fancy gumbo now. Um, as well as mini courgette cake and everything else that we are talking about this week. Now, as we slip into, well, we've gone past the last half hour. We've still got time. If you've got any last ideas of your courgette. Um, which I think there was, as I said last week, people were deciding about Mizuna, Radicchio. I had a look at some seeds as well. We've got salad leaf we could do, or salad, salad leaf, lots of salad leaves to use up. Onion Elisa Craig, I believe we can sow that in August, but um, I'm not, not sure if that would work. Fred Radish we could do, we could do Radicchio. Um, coriander, 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 the cress, uh, spring onions. We've done spring onions before, but there's no reason we can't do any again. More radish, uh, spring onions. Yeah, you get the idea. Any of these ideas that you would like us to sow on next week's, excuse me, sew along, that would be great. And the subject for next week as well. So what have we got on the list? Um, use a grow your own to lose weight. That's something I'm looking to do. Smoothie recipes, something we've touched on in the past. Design a show garden, your favourite tool. Garden design, why do we grow your own food? Uh, must have garden tools. Perennial veg, I think that's popped up quite a few times actually. Your sowing dates, when do you sow certain seeds? 
Uh, potting on, that was a subject I think Stuart said about. Secretaires stripped down because somebody was having trouble with secretaires. I thought we could strip that down on a live stream one day. And beetroot recipes and the wormery is all on the list of possible subjects for next week. Um, oh, I, I remembered the other comment that I wanted to ask everybody. Is anybody going, it's about a month away now, Gardner's World Autumn Fair, Audley End House in, it's the 1st, 2nd and 3rd of September. Is anybody going to that on the Sunday? Um, I'm going on the Sunday. Is a little... I've been asked to do a talk. I haven't had it confirmed yet, but I could be on stage, on one of the stages, doing a talk on that Sunday. So if anybody is going, let us know. I'm looking forward to it, to say the least. Uh, Stuart says, I put courgettes in the vegetable tray bake today, cut chunky along with potatoes, carrots, peppers, onions, and mushroom. Very, very tasty. Yeah, just roasted courgettes a good idea um trouble is with courgettes obviously they've got quite a bit of moisture in them so they they often make everything else moist around them as well uh, jenny says i use two flat wooden spoons either side of the potato to slice for hassleback you slice but not all the way through add oils and rubs I'm not, but I'm not sure there's lots more you can do with it. I think when you told me about this before, I tried it and it was absolutely delicious. Uh, Anne says, I'm also growing harlequin squash, green and white patty pan, and little gem. Harlequin squash. They sound very interesting, harlequin. Are they like um, red with black spots or something? Let us know. Let us know. That sounds really interesting. Patty pans, I think we're we're trying a lot. Uh, Digwell says, pull a chopstick either side to prevent accidental slicing right through. Yeah, here we go. A couple of ideas um, about that. Sorry, I will not be around next week, Stuart says, as I'm away and the Wi-Fi is very patchy on the top of the cliff where we're staying on, but I will try to make it. Um, yeah, oh, you're down the wild of white again, aren't you? I'm guessing, Stuart. Jenny says, I, I'll see how far away it is. It is in Essex. It's Saffron Walden, Oldley End House, Saffron Walden, uh, which kind of works with all the vegetable growing in I don't know if anybody's ever tried growing saffron. We used to. Don't get a huge amount of it. Rebecca, I would love to go, but not sure about travel yet. It isn't, it is, it isn't, it isn't, well, it's just down the M1, I think. So not too bad for getting there. Um, but yeah. David says, struggling to join. We'll try again in work later. Uh, I'll just double check and see if I've got an email to say it goes through. If it's anything, it might be the um, um, the not the very uh, the banks sometimes stop things with they believe to be fraudulent. I think sometimes causes a problem. But I'll, I'll look into it. Don't worry. Scott says, I'm well seasoned with a knife, but yes, definitely recommend doing that if you don't have a knife in your hand most of the, your time. I'm as good with a knife, but probably not. Oh, good. Dropping stuff all over. I'm good with this knife, my uh, hurry, hurry knife. That or my, um, my, uh, my, my machete as well. Scott says, I'm going to the Autumn Fair. It's local to me. Oh, of course it is. Of course it is. I go on the Sunday, Scott, and um, be good to actually meet up. Um, sorry. If you can go on a Sunday, it'd be good to meet up, I should say. <coughs> um, I'm actually around that way where Colchester, Kings Lynn, and Norwich three in the three days before doing a helping... Lee with his stage show as well. It's uh, 
lot going on that week. It's going to be a busy, busy time. It's got a month to prepare for it, but it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. So, yeah, um, subjects for next week. I think beetroot recipe sounds like a good one. Sticking with what is um, – sticking with the, the – things that we are talking about tonight the recipe ideas the beetroot recipe sounds like it might be a good subject for next week what do you guys think for next week and i think we'll probably do the mizuna as the grow along next week because that's quite a tasty one um there we go <laughs> turbo stream says that's not a knife this is a knife crocodile dundee yeah, I've always wanted to do that. No, that sounds really bad, doesn't it? That's how I've always wanted to do that. Uh, what have we got here? Uh, <laughs> Turbo, laughing at Turbo Stream with his crocodile Dundee, big Dundee reaction. Um, right, what has been happening here at the Venture Grow Podcast this week? It's weather really is playing havoc. And I've actually done a allotment tour video to go up later this week. I was trying to really sort of walk around the allotment. And one of the problems I've got at the moment, I haven't been able to cut the grass on the allotment for quite a while i've used the streamer but the grass is just so wet all the time i really want to cut the grass because i always think the allotment just looks so much better when the grass is cut but until it dries out it's just impossible to do with my battery powered lawnmower really a um a petrol lawnmower is much better dare i say it um but but the winds is also causing problems. They've blown over a few of our beans and things like that, causing massive, massive problems that we don't normally suffer with at this time of year. Um, so a bit of problems going on with that. Been getting lots of tomatoes, courgettes, uh, cucumbers, potatoes. You probably saw the short or TikTok I put up yesterday with the potatoes. Uh, what else have we been harvesting? Lots of really good food at the moment. Um, potatoes. Uh, we've got cabbages, cauliflowers, broccoli, uh, beans, of course, peas. Um, so much food that we are harvesting at the moment. It's just amazing how we can try and find ways to use it. But it's a great time of year. It's what I love about it is Got to make the most of the harvest and get those into storage, ready to see us through the winter months. Jenny says, I'm a complete hazard with a knife. I did things all the time. Turns out feet are great at catching kni kitchen knives. It hurts and gets messy. I use a chopping, slicing thing normally. Forgotten name. Probably a mandolin is what you're talking about there. Um, that would be my guess. Is it a mandolin? If I'm, 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 or something like that. Um, yeah, I've got to say, if I ever drop a knife, I never try to catch it. I let it fall and try and get out the way. No point trying to catch it and keep everyone out of the way. Uh, Turbo Stream says, not much gardening done this week. Making sure my back is okay. Of course, you pulled your back, didn't you? I did take up the peas and replace them with some leeks and sowed beetroot in between them. Yep, um, I've I've taken up some of my first peas and I've uh, put some compost down and I'm sh getting more peas to get or sorry more peas in that place so along the same lines as you. Uh, uh, love Mizuna. When I mentioned it in our staff room, no one had ever heard of it. Right, we're doing Mizuna next week. I, I love Mizuna as well. It's uh, it's a good one. I think it's nice and pretty. Uh, bought a pack of winter density lettuce in the home base 50% off sale too. Yeah, lettuce, winter lettuce. You've got to start getting those going soon, haven't we? And Nicola, so sorry I'm late. Just driven back from Brighton home. Three baby chicks arrived while I was away and a fourth today. No worries. Hope you are well, Nicola. Was worried where you were. Um, 
but lovely to see you. Idaho, I've just been transplanting micro dwarf tomatoes and pulling weeds. I poor luck with sowing beans, so sowed some indoors to transplant. Micro dwarf tomatoes. They sound very interesting. I mean, I've tried the uh oh, the my the the dwarf tomatoes before and i wasn't impressed the skins were really thick but micro dwarf tomatoes what are they like let us know um for all the supporters around me hillier's garden centers have got their seeds at 75 percent off it's that time of year isn't it the bargains come along uh Stuart jackson will no doubt know Time to start popping into Wilco's and places like that to find the where they start selling off the plants for like 10p as well. It's gonna be time to see those, I reckon. I have a V slicer, a bit like a mandoline. I bought one back in the early QVC days. Yeah, yeah, I remember when they used to sell them at like markets as well. Nostalgia is a thing of the past. I had one ever since. We used to have one, we got rid of it, but yeah, the V slicer, you put your onions and shh, 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 shh. you can see that because you slice slice it you didn't hurt yourself and it sliced them at the same um same size all the time same stream i need to plant a couple of calabrese plants out this week and make up a frame for the nets yeah yeah i still have a love hate relationship with nets I get find they're getting away. Obviously, you've got a problem with pigeons or cabbage white butterflies. Um, that can be a problem. I think it was I, I put a video up, a short video up the other day with the cabbage, but or picking off the cabbage white caterpillars. And I think it was Digrell who said about uses using Grazer's G3, um, which I suddenly gave me an idea. I started spraying it with the Grazer's G2, which is meant for slugs and snails. But actually, it dealt with the caterpillars quite well as well. Um, little tip for you, but I'm going to take his take um, take Digwell's tip and look at the G3 stuff as well. I believe it is organic certified. Is it organic certified? I can't remember. I, it's meant to be organic anyway. Uh, winter density is a favourite of mine, which is a winter lettuce, of course. Uh, still can't walk much, but driving better. Lovely. Fantastic. Hope you are keeping yourself safe, of course, Nicola. The new V sliders, the new V slices are much better than the old ones. Okay, I might have to look into a new one of those. We're sort of getting rid of junk we don't have, though, to be fair. The stuff we have and don't use. Um, just purely because we're trying to make space and our, our house is in well in in demand uh Stuart jackson says wilkos and tesco's have started dropping places so keep your eyes on when doing your shopping yeah i'm going in for one tomorrow to see what bargains we can find toby stream says our local wilco is a wilco our local wilco is rubbish hardly anything in the sale and not much else they seem to have lost their way somewhat travel is at the moment it's very financially, a lot of supermarkets and shops are struggling financially What with the cost of things to them. Um, I say struggling financially. I don't mean to feel sorry for them, but you know what I mean. Rebecca says, I don't think I ever need to buy any more seeds ever again. I'll be in Wilco's next week. I feel exactly the same if you knew how many seeds I've got next to me. I'm going through my seeds in the next couple of weeks, just talking to Amanda, um, just to try and get rid and drop them down. So there. Madeline's no more fingertips. Yeah, that's why I like, I think, like the uh, Digra says with a V slicer. If I remember correctly, it used to come with like a, a thing that you held, a bit of plastic, and it had like... Um, metal things that just sort of held your your onion whatever you're using into place so you didn't catch your fingers that's what i remember them anyway uh jenny says dinner is ready so gotta go have a great week everyone yeah uh enjoy your dinner jenny and nigel says lots of good fee slices at good food show which also features gardeners world live <laughs> 
there's a good food show near me coming up actually being seen good food at goodwood um which i'm looking at um trying to get to as well and says wilco seeds wilco seeds half price last sunday yeah they they, they do it they need to make room for their Christmas stock, don't it? I always say this, end of the summer holidays, the Halloween and Christmas stock starts appearing in the garden centres, the Wilco's. So they have to make room for it by selling off a lot of the stuff cheap. It's a good time if you are looking for some bargains to go in there and see what they've got. Tommy Stream says, I have cauliflower growing on to plant out soon, hopefully, and cabbage, but and pot off by the slugs that seem to hide in the layers. So are you worried about eating the slugs, Turbo Stream? There is, a, I think, a tip on it that I could possibly share, um, if that's what you're worried about. Turbo Stream, most of my seeds are from a supporters club now. Only buy the odd packet in the shop. Same here, to be honest. Same here. I'm very rare of all seeds that I might get sent. But I, even I, I'm reducing them down. Um, something I'm thinking of when it comes to seed sowing, and I've got about eight minutes left. When it, what I've found, in past years I've had my shed set up that I would sow seeds and be able to move them on it in like that production line model. This year I just relied on my greenhouse and it hasn't quite worked as efficient as I want it. So next year, or well, over the winter, I'm building things in order to make my production line, as I call it, a little bit more reliable and efficient. Uh, Stuart Jackson says, he saw last week, I sorted my seeds. I have never had so much microgreens growing used all the old seeds. Good tip. Very good tip as a way of using up your old seeds, microgreens. Uh, you hit the nail on the head there. The food show supports the gardener's wildlife. Yeah. I uh, hate picking all the slugs out of the cabbages. Horrible job. So, it's, the Muddy Boots has actually just came up with it as well. The cabbage in salt water. Soak the cabbage in salt water when harvested. So the slugs make a fast getaway. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say to you, Turbo Stream. You harvest your, your, um, your cabbage. Get it home, pull it into a bucket of salt water, weigh it down so it stays under. It doesn't take that long, 30 minutes, I suppose. And it doesn't need to be a heavily salted, but pretty soon the, the slugs will vacate in next to no time. Nicola says, I picked up a lot of vermiculite that have been in loft insulation, 20 times 40 litre bags, will use in raised beds or mixing with compost for plants. Was that from Facebook Marketplace? Because there's always bargains on Facebook Marketplace or um, what have you. Um, I Personally, when it comes to things like perlite and vermiculite, I do think bulk buying is the way to go. I think 10 litres in a garden centre for perlite is round about nine pounds i bought what was it 100 liters i think it was from an online place in bulk this obviously i had the new um new veggie pod and i bought 100 liters i think it was 100 liters was it 50 something like that for 40 quid including posting packaging it just worked out much better than trying it to do it any other way uh, what else is anybody saying? Uh, Nicholas says, yes, from Facebook Marketplace, another place. To, if you are looking for bargains, Facebook Marketplace. I normally buy 100 litres for £34. I think that's the same place as I got my Perlite from, 100 litres for £34. Um, and I've used quite a bit of it up in the veggie pod. A uh, good tip about the salt water uh, and turbo stream is also liking that. Might try it in the future. Thanks, Nigel. It's worth it. Um, well worth doing it. Stu Jackson, I'm very lucky at the moment. I have a family of hedgehogs living under my shed, so I'm very, a very happy gardener at the moment. Indeed, yeah. Um, I'm with you on that. I am completely with you. I, I haven't seen our hedgehogs anymore. I don't know what's happened. Hopefully it's not Roxy thinking about it. 
But we used to have hedgehogs and had very, very few problems with slugs and snails when the hedgehogs were here. But still don't get a huge amount of problems with slugs and snails, as I've said time and time again. Seagulls, I think, are a big thing. There we go. A tubby stream has said, does the salt water kill the slugs? It's not so much it kills them. It's they don't like it, so they try and get away from it as quick as they can. If they're left in there too long, then it could kill them. But I, I, I don't find it kills them too much. Um, Digwell says they enter the phase of osmosis where the water leaves their fire their skin into the salt water. Which, yeah. Okay, so I was. I might have done it a bit differently. I I I don't like killing anything, I'll be honest with you. Um, so I tend to try and scoop out the slugs and give them a bit of a fresh water once they come out and hope, pop them back outside and hope they survive. So I, I've not found that it kills them, but I, I am pretty on it. But yeah, it would potentially kill them. It could. I mean, at the end of the day, they're slugs, aren't they? Um, I don't like killing anything, like I say. Nicholas says, feed them to the duck and chickens. That's the other option. Yeah, give them to the duck and chickens. I gave uh, the caterpillars to my chickens as well. They seem to love those. Uh, I love ducks. Love ducks, just not practical here at home. One day when I get a big, big... Um, Somewhere in the middle of nowhere, ducks are going to be high up on the agenda. Right, guys. So next week, are we going to be doing beetroot recipes? I think that's what we're going to be. I think that was what we're going to be doing. Yep. And we're going to do Mizuna. So uh, that's next week. And we'll, we'll do a bit of research into this cookbook as well. Um just make a note of that so I know. Look at research into this recipe so that we can, the cookbook, so we can try and get that published in time for Christmas. Tabby's Stream says, I don't really want to kill them as much as I hate the things I would prefer nature to kill them. Uh, Tabby's Stream says, I wonder if a salt spray would work. I think really they need to bath in it because obviously cabbages, lots of leaves that go all over the place. Um, so you really want to get it submerged so that salt water goes everywhere. And don't forget to wash your cabbage afterwards to get rid of all that salt water as well. I've read that one. I've read that one. Um, yeah. I think we are there. Nicola says she will replay the hour I missed. Thank you so much, everyone. Well, I think we are at the end of this week's show. It's been a good chat as always. Um, I think uh, Alison says... Great show as always. I was worried about you, Alison. I'm glad to see that you are okay. Like I said, I know you said you've been having a, a little bit low lately. We are here every Sunday. You're always welcome to join in. You're always welcome. Uh, email me, Richard at adventuregroundpodcast.co.uk as well. Same for anybody. Email is always open and it's always good to see you as always. Um, Stuart says, collect the slugs and pop them over next door's fence with a laughing emoji. Great show, everyone. See you next week. Another great live show, live stream from Idaho. 12th of August, don't forget, 7 p.m. Idaho goes live with interviewing Digwell. Uh, great show. Digwell says thumbs up and like, guys. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Idaho, hit the thumbs up, everyone. Yep, and another great show, Happy Garden. Hit the thumbs up and what have you. Right, guys, uh, let me get myself out of here. Time to head on indoors and pack up. A nice hot bath is going to be on the cards for tonight as well to saw all these soothing eggs. We will be back again next Sunday at 6 where we're going to be talking about beetroot recipes and growing mizuna. Till then, take care, guys. Look forward to it.